Recently I've been to a flea market where I saw this. An old school radio at least 50 years old. Now truth be told, I've been looking for a new internet radio for a while now. That could sit right on my fridge. Only problem is that I'm not the biggest fan of modern radio designs. And that is why of course I bought myself the old vintage one for only 20 euro. And yes, while time definitely took its toll on the radio, I just love the wooden enclosure in combination with metal highlights and even a bit of fabric. But of course, it was never my intention to use the half a century old electronics inside the radio. My idea instead was to create a new electronic system that can not only play back internet radio live streams, but should also feature Bluetooth music and should be controllable through a touchscreen LCD. Is all of that possible and can you easily build it at home? Well, we will find out in this video. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Onshape, which is the CAD software I used to design the enclosure for my touchscreen later on. And if you want to design your own mechanical parts as well, then you're in luck, because Onshape is free to use for everyone. But of course, if you're a business who needs more capabilities like simulation, PCB connector or built-in PDM, then there are also special plans for that. Now using the software is pretty straightforward and super easy to grasp. And needless to say, it also comes with all the features you could ever need when it comes to CAD design. And since it is running in your browser, you also do not require powerful hardware to run it. So if I piqued your interest, then head over to onshape.pro slash greatscots to try it out or click the link in the video description. Now before getting to the electronic stuff, I firstly wanted to refurbish the old radio enclosure and make it all look good. For that, I firstly removed the big metal part from the inside of the radio, onto which all electronics parts were mounted to. At this point, I of course had to take a closer look at this beauty and play a bit with the variable capacitor, before then removing the potentiometer and faceplate and ripping out all of the old electronics components. And as soon as that was done, I cleaned the metal cage with a wet rag, which I then also used to scrub the radio enclosure on the inside and outside. And after then removing the Grundig laddering, it was time for the step which I honestly was not so sure about, and that was using sandpaper to rough up the surface of the outer housing. I did this so that my favorite wood stain would attach nicely, and after applying two layers of it, I have to say that this was a good decision, at least in my opinion. And after then once again using sandpaper to clean the metal highlights and putting it all back together, I think there was already a big improvement visible. The only thing left that didn't look so good was the bent back plate, but luckily all we need to replicate it is a 3mm thick sheet of MDF. After clamping the old plate to it, I used the pencil to trace its outline and some of the ventilation holes, for not only better looks, but also a special wire later on. Then I simply used the handsaw to cut out my new back plate. And the really cool thing about MDF is that you can use a wide variety of tools to create cutouts, because it is a rather soft material to work with. But anyway, after then drilling all the holes, I was done with the backplate for now and continued with this AC socket with integrated fuse and switch. As you would imagine, this socket ladder delivers the 230 volts mains AC voltage that is necessary to power all of the electronics. And thus, I of course had to mount it to the radio's enclosure, which I did by simply marking the shape of it onto the metal cage and then using an angle grinder to create the fitting cutouts. After then also drilling mounting holes for it, I secured the metal parts once again in the radio and closed it all up with the back plate to mark the required AC socket cutout onto the back plate as well. And the rest was pretty self-explanatory and involved creating the last cutouts, 
painting the back plate with the same wood stain as before, cleaning the face plates and getting that in combination with the potentiometers all back onto the metal cage and finally putting everything back together. And just like that the mechanical part of this build was pretty much done and looking good. Which means it was finally time to move on to the electronics, which mainly consists of three big segments. Bluetooth music, Wi-Fi radio and touchscreen supports. Let's start off with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi music, because there is actually a powerful microcontroller that can do both and that is the ESP32. And luckily for me there exists a popular Bluetooth music library for this microcontroller, but sadly this library didn't work at all for me. Now I was able to connect to the microcontroller via Bluetooth, but no matter what I tried it didn't feel like outputting any audio information. Of course I tried different settings in the library and also looked for other solutions, but after wasting way too much time and not getting any results I had to scratch the Bluetooth function. But on the positive side the Wi-Fi radio function was super easy to implement and worked like a charm. Once again an already existing library does the trick here, in which we only have to add our Wi-Fi information as well as the radio URL we want to open, which you usually find on the website of the radio station. All in all I wanted to change between these 5 different German stations and to all German viewers out there please do not judge me here. Now to easily change between them I defined 5 pins of the microcontroller as inputs and added some simple lines of codes whose job it is to switch over to the selected radio station as soon as the corresponding pin gets connected to a high voltage. And the last thing to note here in the codes are the I2S pins, which are responsible for outputting the audio signal. But unlike the analog audio signal you are probably more familiar with, the I2S pins output a digital audio signal, consisting of ones and zeros, meaning we need a special I2S amplifier to convert it back to analog, so that we can hook up normal speakers. I know it sounds a bit complicated. But you can always check out my dedicated video about I2S to learn more. Anyway, to drive my speaker sufficiently I wanted to go with a 20 watt amp, but after doing research on I2S amps I could not find a fitting board and instead only such an IC that should be able to do the trick though. So long story short I created a custom PCB around it, which ultimately failed to function correctly. Yes, failing is also part of engineering and because troubleshooting would have taken too much time, I simply went with another solution consisting of two separate boards. The first one is an I2S amp that connects to the ESP and converts the digital signal to an analog one. And the second board is simply a 20 watt class D amp, which then amplifies the audio for the loudspeaker. And best of all you can use a normal potentiometer like from the radio to find just the volume level. And in case you're asking yourself here, yes I will be using the old available speaker inside the radio as well, because it actually sounds pretty good. And I would have loved to present a sound demo here, but as you might know radio stations are notorious for broadcasting music that I'm not allowed to use in a YouTube video. Sorry. Ok, with that out of the way most of the electronics are done and the big thing left was only a touch screen that could interact with the input pins of the ESP to change radio stations. And for that I got myself this STM32 disco development board that not only comes with an 800 by 480 pixel touch screen LCD, but also with lots of pins on its backside that we can use. So with the help of the software TouchGFX I very easily created myself a graphical user interface consisting of toggle buttons for the radio stations that could change between a selected and non-selected state slash image. And after then filling them up with a bit of logic and uploading the generated code to the board, 
you can see that my touchscreen controller was already halfway done in less than an hour. And the last thing to do now was to get the GPIO pins to trigger when choosing a station. For that, I simply imported my code into the STM32Cube IDE, in which I then defined 5 additional GPIOs as outputs, and had to write a couple of additional lines of code to basically let them individually turn on or off. And I know that this step might seem a bit intimidating, and if you're lost right now, then feel free to check out the video description for more detailed explanations. But anyway, after then uploading this final code, the touchscreen and GPIO pins seem to react accordingly, which means it was time to design an enclosure for the touchscreen with the help of Onshape, 3D printed all, solder a cable with lots of wires to the touchscreen pins, connect that to the ESP, for which I also already prepared a new perf board with all the mandatory components on it, and ultimately put the screen in its enclosure. And according to my final wiring diagram, only the two power supplies were missing, but they were not really hard to find and also pretty easy to wire up. So to finish this project, I pretty much only did the remaining wire connections according to my diagram, which also includes the mains voltage inputs. And here I have to warn you that working with mains voltage should only be done by a professional. You have been warned. With that being said, all that was left for me to do was getting everything in place and closing everything up. And just like that, my project came to an end. And I gotta say, I'm really satisfied with my new radio. And all in all, it was not such an expensive project to pull off. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe got inspired to make something on your own. If so, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time.